Let us begin with today's lecture which involves equilibrium of rigid bodies and particularly we, are, we will discuss about 2D equilibrium. Now uh, let me first tell that the main text that I am using for this course is Vector Mechanics for Engineers by Beer and Johnston. Uh, the most recent edition okay, which is out uh, just a few months ago is the 10th edition. Okay. I will refer to that book as BJ10 all throughout. Uh, an Indian edition of this book is available and highly recommended. Uh, in this course, I also have used problems from the previous versions of Beer and Johnston, notably 3rd edition and 8th edition. Uh, and note that due to the request from the coordinators during the coordinators workshop, we are also including an extensive session like around 5 to 6 lectures on dynamics. And I wish to point out that dynamics will be exclusively taught uh, from some of the topics covered and the material covered in BJ10. Okay. So, there are many new resources that are available in BJ10 and it will become more clear as we proceed, as we proceed further. So, many of the slide contents in our lectures okay, is from BJ10 from the instructor resources and uh, many features are available from the instructors at this website. If you are interested in more about the book purchase and other details okay, these are available to you. You can uh, act on that uh, sometime later. Now, let us go uh, to the next text that I have used. Uh, so, there are many interesting and challenging problems in engineering mechanics, statics and dynamics and Merriam and Cray. So, there is an older edition, editions 2, 5 and new edition 7. I refer to them as MK3, MK5, MK7 and a lot of uh, interesting problems are taken from this book. And there are a lot of online resources, okay. there are a lot of demonstrations at Mathematica's website demonstrations.wolfram.com. So, Mathematica is a software which is developed by Wolfram. Uh, and there are excellent lectures by Professor Alan Bauer at Brown University and there are general lectures on dynamics on YouTube and nice animations. Okay. So, all these links will be provided to you. So, I really urge you to go and have a look at these resources. Okay. Now, the idea is that, that what is the purpose of learning 2D equilibrium? Okay. The real world okay, as we see around us is mostly a moving world. It is a dynamic world and those topics are definitely covered will be covered in next week. Then the question arises that what is the big deal that right? why do we want to learn about equilibrium at all. So, the point is that even though equilibrium is boring it is great to know about equilibrium because if you are sleeping peacefully on our bed we do not want that bed to collapse. Okay? So, we want to make sure that we know what are the forces acting in each and every component so that everything is stable. So, as I rightly as I pointed out that even though equilibrium systems which are stable are boring, but boring is useful okay? and in fact you will see I hope that even this boring is actually interesting. So, with that in mind, okay. so let us briefly have a look at what you did pre previously. So, Professor Shovik Banerjee taught you vector mechanics or more than taught you, he discussed vector mechanics with you, defined what are forces, moment, torque, he discussed equivalent systems, he discussed distributed loads, centroid, moment of inertia and so on. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to do use those concepts which he had discussed and then go on to what is called as rigid body equilibrium. And before we go on to that concept, let us just briefly remind ourselves about what we mean by a rigid body. So, strictly speaking no object in the world is rigid, but mathematical definition of a rigid body is that, that for example, if you take a, uh, a nice hard bound textbook, you draw two points on that, join them by line, measure the length of the line. Now, you take the book, okay, turn it around, flip it, spin it, okay, do all manner of things with it what happens is that, that the distance between the two points or the length of that line does not change. So, that is a mathematical definition of a rigid body even though in reality no body is fully rigid. Rigidity only implies that the deformations are very small when compared with the body dimensions and as a result many real life structures can really be idealized as rigid and as far as finding out the forces for the statically determinate structures which we will come to very soon, okay, it is a very good approximation to model those structures as rigid. Okay. A few example, okay, this is a building, okay. typically all the forces that are acting on it, you do not want the building to deform so much that the people inside are totally scared about staying inside. Okay. So, we design a building in such a way that the components typically do not change their distances between each other. A room which is like almost like a cube remains almost like a cube as opposed to being deformed to a parallelopiped. 
Another simple example is this cranes, which for example, you see around many construction sites. Okay? So, even though this crane is actually moving because of the help of this hydraulic, uh, hydraulic cylinder, you will see that there are many instances when the crane has to remain stable okay? and at that instant, we can say that the crane is actually a rigid body and when we are talking about the equilibrium of that uh, crane, we can talk about equilibrium of rigid bodies. Okay? Now, let us come to equilibrium. So, uh, let me just tell you that we will go on now for another hour or so and at around say 3, 3.15, we will start with discussion and at that time, we can have like have a transfer of information and knowledge, but till then, let me just discuss what this topic is. Now, what do we mean by a body in equilibrium? So, what we had seen earlier is that you take a rigid body, 2D, 3D, does not matter. Now, that rigid body as far as mechanics is concerned, okay, is subjected to various forces. If it is a structure, then it is subjected to wind loads, it is subjected to self loads, if it is a machine, it is subjected to the internal torques that are created from the pistons of the engine and so on. There can also be internal couples, or there can also be external couples that can act on the structure. Now, a structure is in equilibrium, okay, by definition, okay, so these are the Newton's laws and extended Newton's laws. If sum of all the forces that act on the structure, okay, is equal to 0. Now, what do forces do? We will see that even more clearly when we do dynamics that all the forces acting on the body, they end up in translating the body. So, if the body is here, if the sum of all the forces is not 0, then what will happen is that, that the center of mass of the structure will start translating and will have some acceleration. Okay? And when the sum of all the forces is 0, then we know that there will be no acceleration, the body will either stay uniform or will move at a constant velocity and we say that the body is in equilibrium as far as the forces or translation is concerned. Now, in addition to forces, we also have external moments acting on the structure. These are the external couples Mi. On top of that, the forces acting on the body can also cause torque or moment given by Ri cross Fi. And the total torque that is acting on the structure about some point O, let us say it is the origin of the structure is sigma Mj and some of all the torques or the moments that are caused by these forces and if the body is supposed to be in moment equilibrium, this should be equal to 0. Now, let, let us briefly remind ourselves, what does that mean? That if the moment or the torque about the structure is not 0, then the structure undergoes rotation and in fact, to be precise, okay, all rotational moments, okay, they involve acceleration. Okay, we will see that more when we discuss about kinetics of and kinetics and kinematics of rigid bodies. So, if the sum of the moments acting on a structure is not 0, then the body will start rotating. And the body in equilibrium neither translates nor rotates, okay? and as a result, we say that this structure is purely in equilibrium. Okay? Now, second uh, topic that we come to is supports and equilibrium. Now, what we see is that, that take for example, a building. A building has a nice deep foundation and that acts as a support for the building. So, if the foundation for example, is not firm, then the building will collapse or it will not stand wind loads or lateral loads okay, and fall over. Okay. Now, we will discuss in the, next, uh, uh, in the next class that many structures in real life are, is not just one rigid body, but it is a combination of various rigid bodies that are connected by linkages. Okay. And as we will proceed further, you will see that different linkages and supports keep the body in equilibrium. Okay. And they provide enough reactions that whatever forces are acting on it, corresponding reactions are provided by the linkages and the supports to keep the body stable and prevent it from both translating as well as rotating. That is force equilibrium and moment equilibrium. Okay? So, what are different possible structural supports? Okay? We will have a look at that. Okay? So, one thing that we will mention now is, so there are two complementary things which are called as constraints and reactions. Okay? So, there is an intricate relation between kinematics. What is kinematics? That something is either rotating or translating or something which are parameters are motion of motion which we can see by our naked eyes or which we can for example, use a camera and see the motion that is something that is something that we can see. And the next component are the forces or the reactions. Okay? So, kinematics and reactions as we will see uh, as we proceed further are intricately linked with each other. And what we will see is that, that if a support rigidly constrains a given degree of freedom for a rigid body, then it gives rise to reaction corresponding to that degree of freedom. Similarly, 
Okay, I want to emphasize this point because many a times I have seen that, uh, for example, when you teach your students, I have particularly seen that if this point is emphasized properly, then students are much more clear about what they expect from the support reactions. Say, if a support okay, freely allows motion of particular degree of freedom, then there is no reaction from that support in that particular direction. Now, this point we will emphasize okay, uh, when we go on to what are different types of supports that are present in engineering mechanics okay, and see that what are the kinematics degrees of freedom of that structure and correspondingly what are the reactions that the support can produce or provide. Now, the one of the questions that the student asks a lot of times is that what are 2D structures? No real life structure is 2D, okay? we live in a 3 dimensional world and no structure can really be a 2D structure. So, what is this entire deal about doing this a big topic and writing books after books and discussing sessions after sessions about 2D equilibrium, 2D motion and so on. So, for example, let us take example of this 3 dimensional structure. This is a 3D truss which Professor Shobik Banerjee will teach uh, when, we, uh, when he goes to the uh, section on trusses. You will see that this is a 3D structure, but it is symmetric about this central axis. So, if you draw a, an imaginary plane passing through the center line, a vertical plane, you will see that about that plane, you have one part of the structure here and another part of the structure on the other side and they are essentially mirror images of each other. And look at the loading acting on the structure. For example, if a train okay, passes or a car or a truck, any vehicle passes uh, depending on what kind of bridge this is, then you will see that it is designed in such a way typically that the forces are also uniformly distributed about the central line or the central plane. As a result, what we have is we have a center line, we have a center plane and the structure is symmetric about this side and this side as well as the loading is symmetric about the center plane. Now, in that case, what will happen is that because of the inherent symmetry, you can just look at the structure from the side and whatever one section that you have and the corresponding load, you can say that I am reducing that effective three dimensional structure to a planar structure by exploiting the symmetry that is present in the structure and the load that acts on the structure. So, these kind of 3D structures can typically be modeled as 2D structures. Another type of structures that can also be modeled as 2D structures are when the third dimension of the structure is very small as compared to the other two dimensions and the load is coplanar. What is coplanar? Is that the load lies in the same plane as the structure. For example, if you look at a pair of scissors, if you look from the top, what you will see is that, that the thickness of the scissor is very small okay, as compared to the other two dimensions in this plane. And so, if you look from the top, it is as if we are dealing with a two dimensional objects. So, these are the two typical cases where a really three dimensional objects can be modeled as effectively two dimensional objects. Now, let us come to the most important part of uh, 2D equilibrium and that is reactions and supports, uh, reactions at supports and connections for two dimensional structures. So, we discuss what do we mean by a two dimensional structure. Now, what we will discuss here is that, that what are the various supports that are used in engineering and what kind of reactions that they provide. So, let us take the simp simplest example which is a roller. So, let me spend uh, a few uh, minutes on this because it is a very important topic and I just want to ensure that all of us okay, are on the same page okay, effectively because when we teach our students, uh, this is something that if they master this topic, they understand what are the support, what are the different supports that are, that are possible and what are the different reactions that they provide, then it becomes much more easier for them to draw the free body diagrams and solve the problems effectively. Okay? So, let us look at these structures which are roller structures. Now, what do we mean by rollers? Now, look here, look at this particular structure. We have a main structure which is some beam element or some truss element, whatever is there that it is connected by pin okay, to this triangle and these wheels. Now, what happens here? Now, what are the possible kinematic degrees of freedom at this support? The possible kinematic degrees of freedom, now what is the degree of freedom? Is what possible motions okay, are available at this structure? you will see that the possible motions okay, that, are, that are allowed is translation at this point okay, and rotation at this point. 
okay, because this is connected by a pin. So, this top portion is free to rotate and so there are two degrees of freedom that are free here, but the vertical motion is completely constrained and as a result what happens is that. So, we can see that since this degree of freedom is not constrained, this support is will be unable to provide any reaction in this direction. Since the rotation is not constrained, so rotation is another degree of freedom which is not constrained. So, this structure at this point will not be able to support any torque about this point, but whereas because we are preventing the motion in the vertical direction, this support okay, is possible okay it is possible at this support to exert a reaction in the vertical direction. Now, let us take this support which is a guided roller in this support if the uh, the force is such that this roller tries to move upwards then there is no support for the roller and this support will be unable to provide any reaction in the vertical direction. Whereas, if you come to this structure which is a guided roller the motion is constrained both in the downward direction and in the upward direction and it can provide a reaction which can be both downwards as well as upward. Now, you also have a rocker support, a rocker support is also equivalent to this and a frictionless surface. Now, in a frictionless surface only possible reaction is a normal reaction, but there is no reaction possible in the horizontal direction. And the biggest example of this particular type of structure is the way we stand on the ground. Okay. If we stand on the ground, okay, if the ground is perfectly frictionless, it will be almost impossible for us to keep balance. Although for example, the ground is providing a support to preventing us from sinking down, okay, the lateral support or the support in the horizontal direction will not be possible without any friction. Now, the second type of support we have is a short cable or a short link. Now, what kind of reaction it will provide? Note one thing is that the short cable is supposed to be inextensible and so is the short link. And as a result, if you take this point and try to move in the perpendicular direction to the string or to the short link, then that particular infinitesimal motion is possible. But when you try to pull this along the direction of the string that motion is prevented because of the inextensibility of the string and as a result we can replace when we draw a free body diagram this string with a corresponding force in the direction of the string. Then we have a collar on a frictionless rod. Note one thing that at this point this is connected okay, it is a short collar. So, it is connected by a pin. So, this degree of freedom the rotation is freely possible if this is frictionless the motion along the rod is also freely possible, but we will not be able to move this collar perpendicular to the rod and as a result the only degree of freedom at this joint that is constrained is the motion in the vertical direction and when we draw a free body diagram we can see that there can be a corresponding reaction that can act on it perpendicular to the rod and same goes for a frictionless pin, pin slot. Then let us come to what is a frictionless pin or a hinge. Now, what do we mean by frictionless pin? Frictionless pin means that you have a rod which is connected by a pin and this rod for example, uh, is freely free to rotate about this because of because it is uh, it is frictionless, but what is not possible is this joint is perfectly connected okay, to the structure as a result the translational degree of freedom in the vertical direction is not possible. Uh, translational degree of freedom in the horizontal direction is constrained and because these two degrees of freedom are constrained what do we have is we can either say that this particular support can provide two unknown reactions okay, because this degree of freedom is constrained. So, it can provide a vertical reaction this degree of freedom is constrained. So, it can provide a horizontal reaction the rotation is not constrained because it is a frictionless pin and so we can have two possible support reactions a vertical support reaction and a horizontal support reaction and this can also be equivalently represented as a force acting at an unknown angle alpha. And ultimately what do we have? Ultimately we have a fixed support. Okay. This is for example, what happens when we have foundations or when we have uh, huge pillars uh, uh, which are uh, uh, or huge towers which are uh, connected to wires or cables and so on. And now those of them what do we have is that because the rod is very deep inside at this particular connection the degree of freedom in the horizontal direction is also constrained the degree of freedom in the vertical direction is also constrained and the corresponding rotation is also constrained and so in three in two dimensions there are three degrees of freedom two translations one rotation and this particular support what it does is that it constrains all those degrees of freedom 
and as a result it can provide three possible reactions reaction in the x direction corresponding to constraining the degree of freedom in the x direction reaction in the y direction corresponding to the degree of freedom in the y direction and a torque okay counter clockwise clockwise corresponding to constraining the rotation about uh, about the axis which is coming out of the plane okay so this rotation either clockwise or anti clockwise okay so if you want to convince yourself have a look at various of the supports okay this figure is a very nice figure which demonstrates how various connections what are the degrees of freedom that are constrained and what are the particular support reactions that can be provided so this is a roller and this slide okay uh, if you want to for example go into greater details with your students on what this support means you can have a look at all these particular supports and all of them act as rollers see how are the forces transmitted and for the structure to be everything to be in equilibrium what will be the corresponding supports support reactions that will be provided by these supports okay slot connection okay all these slides okay you have you have access to these slides so you can think about this in greater details if you want to explain to your students what this particular connections mean okay so these are some very simple examples for roller support and a fixed support now for example somebody would ask a question that in equilibrium we are interested that the structure should be in equilibrium okay so why don't we just go ahead and provide this best constraint to the structure okay let us say that the structure should be in equilibrium let us not worry about anything we will only provide this support let's not bother about any other uh, support reactions at all and it is very clear that we can't do that is for example we need to have the structure okay for different purposes say for example this car bonnet if we open the car bonnet it is free to rotate about this hinge and when we want to prop it up then we support it like this okay and keep it in equilibrium in this direction okay so we keep it supported in this direction so what we have is that that we are keeping this as a hinge because if this were a fixed support to begin with then there is no way we can move this flap up and down okay and adjust it in whatever position we want similarly for a roller okay we have a trolley which has rollers now what do we want to do we want to move this trolley from one place to other place depending on we want to carry things around and then lock it and convert it into roller on one place and hinge on other place so different supports are required depending on what are the requirements for example if you want to build a cable bridge which for example uh, is much more convenient to build much more it has many more advantages can take much more load the the the, the amount of material required is much less okay so but the support is now provided by many of these strings now we can as well provide a completely rigid structure but that will be counterproductive so depending on whatever structures that we are interested in we provide different particular types of supports and that's why all these supports okay even though we want to keep the structure in equilibrium depending on what is our requirement from the structure we end up using various linkages and various connections now with this much of uh, introduction let us come to the main part of uh, this 2d equilibrium so free body diagram is essentially the heart of mechanics okay and we all know okay we have all been teaching this course for uh, quite some time and we know that free body diagram is essentially the basis of, of anything and everything we do in engineering mechanics and just to remind ourselves what free body diagram means so what do we do is we zoom into components of a structure what does a free body diagram means that we replace supports or connections with the corresponding reactions or to put it compactly what we do is that we replace kinematic constraints with corresponding reactions now this point will become more clear when we solve a few problems simple examples of free body diagrams so let us take simple example of a beam this particular triangle and a circle it's a typical notation that that is used for a hinge support same here now we saw a few moments ago that what is done by a hinge support at the hinge support look at this joint a at point a what is what are the kinematic degrees of freedom there are three kinematic degrees of possible freedom one is translation in the horizontal direction one is translation in the vertical direction and third is rotation now what is this joint doing it is preventing translation in the horizontal direction and as a result it can provide a reaction ax in the horizontal direction at this joint we are also preventing a kinematic motion in the vertical direction and as a result this support is capable of providing a reaction in the y direction 
Similarly, the same logic works at point B, where point B is also a hinge joint. That because we are constraining two degrees of freedom, horizontal and vertical translation, we can have two possible reactions, a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction at point B. And now this continuous, this thing where we have external loads, forces that can be provided by these supports, where all the kinematic constraints are now replaced by forces and whatever the resulting diagram we get is what we call typically as the free body diagram. Okay, I am just uh, reminding ourselves that what is the definition of a free body diagram. Now let us look at another structure quickly. What do we have here? We have a fixed support and we saw that at a fixed support, what are the kinematics degree of freedom that are constrained? So the kinematic degree of freedom constraint is the translation in the x direction, translation in the y direction, but in this case, because the rotation is also fixed, because it is a fixed support, we are also constraining rotation and as a result, when we replace this support, we have to replace the kinematic degrees of freedom with the corresponding reactions, which will now be Ax, Ay and the corresponding torque. And now point A, this is one way of representing a roller that note that the gap here, which means that this is free to slide in the horizontal direction, okay, if left alone. Now as a result of this, the degrees of freedom that is constrained is only the translation in the y direction and as a result, this point B in this case is capable of providing only a reaction in the vertical direction and this now is the main structure with the supports and applied load and what we are doing here is that we are replacing that with the corresponding reactions that can be provided by the supports and this is now our free body diagram. There is absolutely no kinematic constraint here. Only thing we have are the reactions and the applied forces. Okay? So force results in reactions because of uh, the presence of the supports and in a free body diagram, we replace these kinematic constraints purely by the corresponding reactions that are available here. So these are various examples, okay, you can have a look at that. Okay. I am sure for example, we have discussed many of these things at great leisure, but it is one point I have seen that if you emphasize free body diagram more and more with the students with many, many examples, then that concept become much more clear to them and um, they feel much more comfortable solving simple problem to begin with and graduating to more complex problems. Okay. So concept of free body diagram, okay, just between ourselves like we can't emphasize this enough to the students. So whenever students are writing, uh, solving any problem, we have to like it is our experience that we just keep hammering this concept on them again and again. That you want to find out forces, you have to talk about free body diagram. Okay, draw a free body diagram and then and only then talk about equilibrium and any other thing. So free body diagram is the single most important concept okay, and we, we will all agree on this in engineering mechanics. Let us take a simple problem. This problem is taken from uh, Beer and Johnston 10 uh, from the instructor slides. What we have here okay, is we have a structure, okay, uh, the frame sh shown supports part of the roof of a small building. Okay. Uh, so we have to give this problem to the students saying for example that uh, their goal is to draw a free body diagram for the problem. What is given to us is the tension in the cable BDF which is 150 kilo Newton. Now what we do? To draw the free body diagram of this structure, what are the kinematic degrees of freedom? What we have here is that this tension is known to us which is 150 kilo Newton. Okay. So we replace, we make a cut in the string here okay, and we can replace that with a corresponding force at this joint E, it is a fixed joint. What are the kinematic degrees of freedom that are constrained here? So one is the translation at point E in the horizontal direction is completely constrained, not possible at all. Okay. Vertical translation is completely constrained at joint E and the rotation is also constrained. So we have constrained three kinematic degrees of freedom. So we replace that. Okay. So when we go on to the next slide, we see that we can have various ways in which we can draw the free body diagram. At this point, we have moment, vertical force, horizontal force. Why? Because all these kinematic degrees of freedom are constrained. Now, one of the ways, for example, we can tell the students. So these are the common mistakes that students make while drawing, uh, while having the uh, drawing the free body diagram. So there are various ways in which we can draw the purported free body diagram. So if we go to uh, point A, okay. If you go to uh, sub figure A, we will see that we have replaced this cable with a tension of 150 kilonewton 
okay we are make a cut here and say that the force acting on it is acting directly at point b and say that we replace the cable with a force here we replace the support at point e with respect to these three support reactions okay that is clearly not a proper free body diagram why because this string is not only exerting force at joint b but it is also exerting force at joint d from this side as well as this side so drawing this is not at all right if we take this and add 150 150 and 150 so because this string is applying forces both at joint d and joint b this is fine okay this is like uh, we can emphasize to the students that this is a common mistake that they can make but this is an appropriate way of drawing the free body diagram why because this string is connected to the structure not only at point b but also at point d so when we replace this string with the corresponding tension we have to make sure that the the points where the tension acts are all taken care of okay so this is also a valid free body diagram this is the best free body diagram why because if you want to find out what are the reactions at this point we don't need to go into all these details because these two are forces which are acting along the same line and their equivalent effect on the structure will cancel out why because they are equal and opposite and they are acting along the same line so they can not produce a torque and the sum of 150 and minus 150 will cancel each other so effectively this we have emphasized to the students is the best way of drawing the free body diagram and this d okay many students actually do this but this is completely wrong why because we have not released this kinematic constraint what is the kinematic constraint here that is string okay you cannot move the string in this direction so there can be a possible reaction which in this case is given to us 150 kN but that is possible and since it is not replaced here you may end up getting some complete garbage answer okay the students if for example you don't draw the appropriate free body diagram so one of the things uh, for example uh, which is recommended is that we expose students to all possible free body diagrams we tell them that what are the possible mistakes that they can make you by inventing situations ourselves okay that these are the possible mistakes they make and what is the reason why a particular free body diagram is right or it is not right and once this concept becomes very clear we have seen that the students become very very comfortable solving uh, simple to complicated okay all possible problems okay they can solve them much properly once they understand that what a particular what what is a free body diagram and that the equations of equilibrium are to be applied only to a free body diagram and not to a structure like this okay now we come to actually that we have a free body diagram and what is our interest that we have applied some forces we have applied some torques and we want to find out what are the reactions what are the reactions at the supports what are the reactions at the linkages that is the main goal of this course okay and with this mind what do we need to do we need to write equations of equilibrium now we saw that in three dimensions if you look at this full body and this problem this this particular concept will become even more clear okay for all of us means like we will we will remind ourselves next week that what this concept is and so on when we do dynamics of rigid bodies now a rigid body in a in a plane has 3 degrees of freedom okay take this full rigid body ab this rigid body ab can translate in the horizontal direction it can translate in the vertical direction and it can rotate now because of this okay this simple idea in terms of equilibrium what does it translate to that when this is in equilibrium we are preventing the full translation of this uh, previously what we had looked at is we had looked at only one joint for us to understand that what the support reaction should be now once we decided that what particular kinematic degrees of freedom are constrained here we found out that these are the possible reactions that are possible uh, at these supports now we are looking at a full free body diagram and we know that for this entire system to be in equilibrium we should have translation in the horizontal direction that is prevented rotation in the vertical uh, uh, translation in the vertical direction is prevented as well as the rotation is to be prevented and the corresponding equilibrium r fx or the equilibrium in the horizontal direction sum of all the forces in the horizontal direction should be zero fy sum of all the forces in the vertical direction is zero to prevent motion in the y direction and sum of all the torques about some point it can be a b or c whatever it should be equal to zero you can also convince the students that these are not the only way it can happen for example we can also use equation like sigma fx equal to 0 sigma mb and sigma ma equal to 0 so writing three conditions like this okay is also fine because we can see in dynamics that 
any motion of a body two translations and one rotation can also be thought of as one translation and two rotations about two different points you can think about a motion like this or furthermore any motion a translation two translations and one rotation can also be if we think about it carefully we can convince ourselves that that particular motion can also be replaced by three rotations one about point a one about point b and one about point c okay and all these three points don't lie in a straight line they form a triangle and any rigid motion can also be uh, written to be a combination of these three and as a result we can also replace like these three conditions are all equivalent to each other that we can say that if we say that sum of all the moments about point a sum of all the moments about point b and sum of all the moments or torques about point c is equal to 0 all these three conditions are equivalent to each other and there is one thing which we for example should emphasize students all the time is that these three are not independent equations of motion we write these three they will imply these three they will imply these three all these are equivalent to each other there is no new information that is given here so writing more than three equations per free body okay it's clearly should be punishable by law okay if it is not already okay so it is definitely not allowed to do this thing so only in three in two dimensions the number of equations per free body will be three and only three no more than three okay and as we will see further that the equations can be trivially satisfied in some cases okay but you cannot write equations uh, number of equations of equilibrium more than three in 2d equilibrium now with this much of a preamble okay let us solve a very simple problem okay so i had discussed this problem in the coordinators workshop and uh, it's a very simple problem but why i'm doing this is that so that everybody is on the same page okay so what we have here is that we have a rigid structure acd which is pinned or connected at point c with a hinge joint further what we have is that we have a cable abc which is connecting point d through a roller okay which is which has a frictionless hinge connection here okay the roller is free to rotate there is no friction at the hinge for this roller it goes over this roller and then it is connected at point a now this structure is subjected to a load of 150 newton at this point and what we are asked to do is we are asked to find out what is the tension in this cable abd and what are the support reactions at point c now this is a very simple problem but there is a reason why we took this simple problem is we want to understand what is the role played by the cable and what is the role played by this support to keep this system in equilibrium okay so let us think about it so let us ask ourselves a question what is the role played by this cable abd now if you cut this cable if the cable were not there then what happens is that we all know that this system now is free to rotate about point c so the cable what it is doing is preventing the rotation of the uh, body acd about point c so as a result we immediately know that what should be our equation of equilibrium that this is the tension in the cable this is the tension in the cable and what is the cable doing for this free body diagram that the support c is preventing two translational degrees of freedom okay motion in the x direction motion in the x in the y direction so that will lead to two reactions fcx in the horizontal fcy in the vertical direction the cable what is it doing that it is preventing motion of point a along direction ab that will lead to tension along ab what happens at point d this cable is preventing any motion of point d okay in the vertical direction so that should lead to or that should lead to a possible tension in the cable in the vertical direction now the question we ask ourselves is that that there can be some tension here t1 there can be some tension here t2 what can we say about the relation between t1 and t2 note here that we have mentioned very clearly okay or typically it is okay to assume in this course okay as a pur for purposes of idealization that if this pulley is well oiled if you have put enough lubrication in the pulley then this pulley is free to rotate and as a result if we draw the free body diagram for the pulley itself at the joint b okay this joint b is where the pulley is connected to this support what do we have rotation is free which means that there is no possibility of an internal torque that is provided at joint b translation of the pulley is prevented by the hinge there so there is a possibility of vertical reaction horizontal translation is prevented at joint b 
as a result there is a possibility of having a vertical uh, the, there is a possibility of having a reaction in the horizontal direction. Now for this pulley if we take moment or torque about point B you will see that the only torque is provided by this T1 into R T2 into R and because now T1 minus T1 into R minus T2 into R should be equal to 0 because this pulley also is in equilibrium we will immediately see that T should be equal to T1 should be equal to T2 and it is a common tension all throughout the string and now we come to this free body diagram and what we will see is that that the, that the, the string here or the tension provided by the string is preventing the rotation of this free body diagram ACD about point C and so we immediately know that the equation of equilibrium that we should write in order to obtain this tension why because what is this tension doing it is preventing the rotation about point C and so the corresponding equation of equilibrium is sum of all the torques or moments about point C what are they moment provided by this 150 kilo Newton what direction moment will it provide just think about it assume as if this is a door which is hinged about point C now if you apply a force on this door like this the door will tend to rotate in the clockwise direction uh, anti clockwise direction so that is the direction of the moment we have written all the moments in the clockwise direction so 150 into 225 anti clockwise moment so this is clockwise positive so minus 150 into 225 okay and then all the torques so this tension if you say look at this CD assume this to be a door CD you apply a tension in the vertical direction how will the door tend to rotate we emphasize this to the students the door will tend to rotate in the anti clockwise direction so the torque uh, sorry uh, in the anti clockwise direction so the torque produced by this tension will be minus T into this 75 this T is vertical so T into 75 is the torque provided by this thing and then coming to this tension now this tension can be broken into two components and then as Professor Banerjee discussed we can use the Verignon's theorem that the moment or the torque which is provided by this tension about point C will be nothing but the torque provided by the horizontal component plus the torque provided by the vertical component about point C look here the vertical component if this is an imaginary door how will it tend to rotate about point C because of this force it will tend to rotate in the clockwise direction so we have this particular positive sign phi by 13 into 225 is the torque produced by this vertical force about point C 12 by 13 t is the horizontal force think about it what is the vertical distance is 175 so the torque provided by this force about axis C okay or about joint C will be simply 12 by 13 t into 175 should it be clockwise or anti-clockwise just imagine that door again if this is a door if we apply a force like this how will it tend to rotate about point C it will tend to rotate in the clockwise direction and that is why it is 12 by 13 plus okay into 175 so these are the all possible torques that equal to 0 for equilibrium and we immediately get what the tension is now we ask ourselves okay we got the tension we are also asked to find out what are the displays what are the reactions at point C now note one thing now we again ask ourselves a question okay what is joint C doing here suppose what happens if this joint C okay will wear, wear a roller joint okay not a hinge joint so it was free to translate in the horizontal direction such that no reaction can be provided so what you will see is that, that if you prevent this uh, if you put that a roller instead of a hinge then because of the presence of the tension in this direction look at the free body diagram okay this tension now will tend to translate this in the horizontal direction and there will be absolutely no resistance to that motion so what is joint C doing is against this tension T it is preventing the translation in the horizontal direction so we write down the equation of equilibrium for this free body diagram in the horizontal direction and we immediately get what is FCX and correspondingly we ask the same question why should there be a vertical reaction what if we put a roller here in such a way that the only reaction produced in the horizontal direction and not in the vertical direction then the answer is again clear this tension T this tension T the vertical component these two vertical components and this vertical load they will not balance each other okay without this support and as a result without the present of this vertical constraint or the corresponding vertical reaction FCY it is not possible to prevent the vertical translation of this particular free body and so the immediate equation that comes to our mind is that sigma FY Y is the vertical direction we are taking should be equal to 0 
or sigma f uh, we write all the forces 13 5 by 13 t plus plus t minus 150 t we already obtained plus f c y equal to 0 and we see that f c y is equal to minus 120. And what we have done here arbitrarily, we have assumed that the direction here is in this direction, it is upwards for f c y. But what we are getting here is we are getting minus 180 here, we are getting minus 120 here. It only means we all know and we should emphasize this to the students that minus just means that the direction that we have assumed before was not right. Actually the reaction is provided in the other direction or not in the to the right but to the left. So that is the reaction and 120 Newton minus means it is not upwards but it is downwards. And we uh, emphasize this point to our students so that this point becomes very clear that a priori if we have enough intuition then we are good, we can choose the direction. But somehow if you are not completely sure to begin with what direction should we choose, then the best choice is without worrying too much, without lot of fuss, just choose the direction and if the force comes out to be negative, it just means that whatever direction you have chosen, the actual direction is just opposite of that. Okay? Now let us discuss this brief point, okay? this is taken from Merriam and Craig 5th edition, this particular figure. We note one thing that there are various force systems. So a few slides ago, we emphasized <coughs> that the maximum number of equations that you can write for a free body diagram in 2D in equilibrium is 3, but that is the upper limit. Now say if you have forces which are all collinear to each other, they all act in a straight line, then we can simplify our problem greatly by choosing x direction along the line of action of the forces take the x as the line on which the forces act, then what happens is that three collinear forces, the only equation of equilibrium we need is sigma of all the forces along the x direction should be 0 because there is no force component in the y direction which is now perpendicular to this that is automatically satisfied, moment equilibrium is automatically satisfied. Second special case is when all the forces meet at one point, then what we see is that we can write two independent equations one is sum of all the forces acting on this free body in the y direction is 0, sum of all the forces acting on this free body in the x direction is 0, but because the forces are all concurrent about point O, if you take torque about point O, we will see that the moment balance is automatically satisfied. Okay, we can convince ourselves by just little bit of a thought that they are concurrent, so we can take torque about point O and moment balance is automatically satisfied. We can also convince ourselves that if you take torque about some other point also, the fact that the forces are concurrent and the sum of forces in the x and y direction is 0 will automatically ensure that the torque about some other arbitrary point will also be equal to 0. Another special case is when all the forces are parallel to each other, then what we can do? We can say x axis is along the direction of which these forces act, y axis is perpendicular. Now note one thing that we need an equation sigma f x is equal to 0 in the horizontal direction clearly that for the body to be in equilibrium these forces should be 0, but the equation of equilibrium in the y direction is automatically satisfied because there is no force component in the y direction and the only extra equation now you need is that these forces can cause a torque or moment about some chosen point and so we need an extra constraint that sigma m about z, so z axis is coming out. So all the forces will be about the axis which is coming out should also be 0. So instead of having three equations of equilibrium, we have for this special case only one equation, this special case only two equations, this special case for parallel forces only two equations and ultimately a most general case where we have forces which did not be concurrent plus we can have couples acting on the free body diagram, then all three equations should be written in order to solve what are the support reactions, what are the link reactions for a free body diagram. Now this one important point which I want to emphasize is how do we know that a structure is properly constrained? Because we said that the support reactions can be provided by various supports, okay? but ultimately what we want to know is for a given structures, when we are providing the supports, are they capable of providing reactions in such a way that under any possible loading acting on the structure? this support, this structure is in equilibrium. So let us look at uh, three special cases. Uh, let us look at uh, this some four cases. Let us look at this structure. This figure is taken from Merriam and Craig, fifth edition. We have a structure, okay, let us call this body, which is constrained by a link, 
in the horizontal direction. So, it can provide a reaction only in the horizontal direction. Second link, this link is preventing motion of point O in the vertical direction. So, it can provide a reaction in the vertical direction and a third support at this point which prevents translation in the vertical direction. So, what we have prevented is that, that with this uh, pin we are preventing translation in the horizontal direction, with this support we are preventing translation of this body in the vertical direction and with this support we are preventing the translation at this point for this body in the vertical direction. And then you can convince yourself that with these constraints it is not possible to translate or rotate this body without deforming the body. And so, this is an adequately constrained system. You can also convince yourself that whatever load okay, or you can also ask the students to convince themselves or we can have discussions with them to make them sure that in one way neither is it possible to take this body and either translate or rotate it without deforming the body or we can apply any forces or any set of forces on it the reactions provided by these three supports will be enough to keep this body in equilibrium. So, this is an adequately constrained system. But now what we do is that we play some tricks. Let us say we remove this structure uh, sorry we remove this support and connect it at this point. Now, the way we connect it is that that the line of the support reaction the, the support reaction that can now be provided only in this direction and the line is such that it intersects at this point. Now, this is clearly not a system in equilibrium why because if I apply any vertical load at this point because all these support reactions because they are intersecting at one point if I apply a force which does not pass through that point A then it, it can create a torque about point A and these support reactions will be incapable of supporting the structure under a loading which does not pass through the point through which all the support reactions pass. So, in simple words if all the support reactions intersect at a point then that is not an adequately constrained system why because we can apply a force which does not pass whose line of action does not pass through the point of intersection of all the supports and there is nothing to balance the torque created by that force about the point through which all these reactions pass through. Now, let us take another example <coughs> is that we take this free body take this support uh, structure we have three supports now ok 1, 2, 3. Now, we have three supports all of them are parallel to each other. So, one thing this support produce a reaction in the horizontal direction this support can provide a reaction in the horizontal direction and this support can provide a reaction in the horizontal direction. Now, what is the problem with this structure? Clearly, if I apply a vertical force, then this support reactions will not be able to provide any reaction to the vertical force and the system will be in not in equilibrium with respect to force balance in the vertical reaction in the vertical direction. So, as a result we can make another statement that if all the reactions that are provided by the support are parallel to each other then that system is not adequately constrained. Why? Because any force that is then applied perpendicular to the directions in which the reactions are acting then there is nothing to balance the force in that particular direction. And then ultimately let us take an extra case where while removing three supports we remove uh, without removing any support we just add an external support here. Now, what we have? We have particular uh, so we have four particular support reactions, but we had emphasized ok. We had emphasized previously that we can write only three equations of equilibrium for a free body diagram and so for a free body diagram the equations that are allowed are only three, but the constraints or the unknowns that are present here are four and as a result the number of unknowns is more than the number of equations that are present in the system and such kind of systems are called as statically indeterminate systems and that is not particularly a topic of engineering mechanics. These kind of structures um, I am sure for example, uh, when we teach a course on uh, solid mechanics, structural mechanics, strength of material ok. So, these are the kind of problems that are dealt with in this course uh, in those courses whereas, in this particular course we only deal with statically determinate systems in which the total number of uh, unknowns for uh, for the system is equal to the total number of equations that we can write for the system. And for this simple free body diagram even the sample problem which we had saw solved earlier the number of unknowns we had was 1 ok and 2 3. So, 3 were the number of unknowns 
but we could write three equations of equilibrium and could obtain the values of all the unknowns. If we had some extra constraint provided somewhere, then that structure would be statically indeterminate and that is beyond the, the scope of this course. Okay. So, let us uh, have a brief look at this, uh, at this simple problem taken from Beer and Johnston. So, what do we have here? We have uh, this is a particular mechanism, okay. This is a door, okay. We are looking it only from one side. The door, you can imagine that the door is coming out of the plane of uh, EDC. And what we are looking at is that the door is supported on two sides. This there is a pin or a roller at point A, there is a roller at point B. Now, what is happening here is that that we apply some tension on the on the door just think about it that this is the door imagine it coming out in the third direction on one side of the door we are providing uh, a tension t on the other sub uh, other line of support we are also providing uh, uh, a tension t and what we are asked is that that if we make the tension to be equal to zero then what happens is that we will immediately we can imagine that this force W okay, will be unbalanced. Okay. The only support reactions provided at A okay, is the vertical reaction in the y direction. Why? Because it is a free roller. This degree of freedom is not constrained. This degree of freedom is constrained. As a result, this, do, this point A is free to slide in the horizontal direction. Point B is free to slide in the vertical direction. This degree of freedom is constrained. The rotation is also free. As a result, if there is no tension that is acting on this door in the horizontal direction, then this door will completely collapse under its own weight and become straight. But now, if you want to open this garage door, what we do is that we apply some tension T on both sides, on this side of the door and on the other, other side of the door. And depending on how much tension we apply, we can keep this door to be in equilibrium at some certain angle theta. Now, what we are asked to find out is we are given all the parameters. We are given this dimension A, we are given this dimension B. Okay. We are also told that the total distance, uh, uh, that the door is hold in this particular position for which BD okay, is equal to 1050. So, we know angle theta. AC is equal to 2100. So, we also know that G or the center of gravity through which the entire load effectively of the gate acts okay, passes through the center. And now what do we have is if we draw the free body diagram of this entire mechanism, think about it. What do we have? This is the weight of the door. Okay. The door is symmetric. Even though the door is three dimensional, it has this support on one side, the same support on the other side. So, what we do is that we just take one half of the door and take it as if it is a planar problem. At point A, we have a reaction in the vertical direction. Why? Because this degree of freedom is free, rotation is free, only degree of freedom constraint is the motion in the vertical direction. This is the reaction. Tension T is the applied tension which is an unknown. This reaction also is an unknown. Look at support B. What do we have at support B? This motion is free, this degree of freedom is constraint. So, what do we have? Only possible reaction that can act will be like this. Now, we look at this free body diagram for the entire door. This angle theta is given to us. The position through which the load act is given to us. So, all the dimensions, all the geometry, everything is given to us. The known weight is W and the three unknowns in this problem are R A, R B and T. And what we are asked to find out? We are asked to find out all these three quantities. Now, the number of equations that we can write is 3 and the number of unknowns present is also 3. T, R A and R B. So, this is a statically determinate problem which can be solved using standard techniques that we have discussed just a few moments ago. Now, the idea is that what is the appropriate equation of equilibrium that we should look at. Now, let us think about it that if this tension were not there, then what will happen is that there is a concept called as instantaneous center of rotation which we will learn or which we will brush our concept of on when we discuss this topic next week. So, this point A will try to slide in the horizontal direction, point B will try to slide in the horizontal direction and you will see that the line joining these two will be the point okay, where this entire structure will tend to instantaneously rotate about 
or you can also think about it this way that the reaction will pass through O here, the reaction from B will pass through O here, it will meet at this point and so if we take the uh, for this free body diagram the moment balance about point O then the contribution of this goes away, the contribution of this goes away and the only contribution remains is from the weight which is a known quantity and from the tension which is also a known quantity and we can write down a simple equation of equilibrium this is A, this is B. So, A plus B sin theta is this vertical distance minus T times sin theta, why minus because the convention for torque we have taken to be clockwise, look at this. If I apply a force like this, about uh, apply a force in the horizontal direction, if you want to take torque about point O, imagine, imagine that there is some imaginary door OA which is hinged about point O, upon application of this force the door will tend to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction that is why this minus and this W imagine that same uh, door about point O, you apply this force W that imaginary door will tend to rotate in the clockwise direction that is why plus and what is the horizontal direction here? It is W A cos theta. So, this is the torque created by this, this is the torque created by this one is anti-clockwise, one is clockwise sum equal to 0, we will see that we will immediately get what is T and then correspondingly we do equilibrium of all the forces for this free body diagram in x direction and y direction and then what do we get? We can immediately find out what is the reaction at point A and what is the reaction at point B. And here we are dividing it by 2y because this load is equally shared on both sides that supports are here and then supports are on the other side of the door. Okay?